In the shadowy underworld of drug trafficking, few names inspire as much fear and fascination as Griselda Blanco. Known as the cocaine godmother, Blanco's reign of terror in the 1970s and 80s left an indelible mark on the criminal landscape of the United States. This is her story. Griselda Blanco Restrepo was born on February the 15th, 1943, in Cartagena, Colombia. Her childhood was marked by poverty and violence, setting the stage for the ruthless criminal she would become. Colombia in the 1950s was a country torn apart by a period known as La Violencia. This decade-long civil war claimed the lives of over 200,000 people and shaped the violent landscape that would give rise to future drug cartels. At the innocent age of 11, Blanco allegedly committed her first murder, kidnapping a child from a wealthy neighborhood and shooting him when the ransom wasn't paid. This act of brutality would be just the beginning of her violent career. As Blanco entered her teenage years, she turned to pickpocketing and prostitution to survive. It was during this time that she met her first husband, Carlos Trujillo, who introduced her to the world of document forgery and human trafficking at only 13 years old. Blanco and Trujillo divorced in the late 1960s, but they continued to work together in a marijuana distribution business. Carlos Trujillo was killed at some point in the early 1970s. It's widely reported that Griselda Blanco allegedly ordered the murder of Carlos Trujillo over a business dispute. However, Blanco was never charged with his death and her involvement remains unproven. By the early 1970s, Griselda Blanco had set her sights on a new market, cocaine distribution in the United States. As cocaine news skyrocketed in America, Blanco's operation grew increasingly sophisticated. Blanco's operation began in the coca fields of Peru and Bolivia. Her new husband, Alberto Bravo, oversaw the purchase of raw cocaine, which was then smuggled into Colombia. In Medellin, the cocaine was processed and packaged for export. But getting it into the United States posed a significant challenge. She pioneered innovative smuggling methods that revolutionized drug trafficking. She designed lingerie with hidden compartments for cocaine, a tactic both groundbreaking and incredibly dangerous. These specialized brassieres and girdles could hold up to a kilogram of cocaine each, worth about $10,000 in profit. The drugs were hidden in plain sight right where border guards' eyes were drawn. She trained Colombian women as drug mules, instructing them to dress attractively and flirt through customs. Blanco's operation smuggled cocaine in false-bottomed suitcases, shoes, and even dog crates. For larger shipments, Blanco utilized speedboats, establishing maritime routes to evade Coast Guard patrols. Initially based in New York, Blanco's operation quickly expanded, moving hundreds of kilos of cocaine per month. At its peak, Blanco's distribution network was earning $80 million per month. Blanco's success drew the attention of US law enforcement. In April 1975, she and over 30 associates were indicted on federal drug conspiracy charges as part of Operation Banshee. Blanco managed to evade arrest by fleeing to Colombia. But by the late 1970s, 
she had returned to the United States, establishing an even larger operation in Miami. Miami, in the 1980s, became the epicenter of Blanco's empire. Her organization moved an estimated 1.5 tons of cocaine per month. The profits were astronomical and Blanco amassed a fortune, living a life of extreme luxury. But with immense profits came extreme violence. Blanco is believed to have been responsible for up to 200 murders. Her ruthlessness earned her the nickname the Black Widow, as even her husbands weren't safe from her wrath. Blanco's reign coincided with a dramatic spike in violence in Miami. In 1980 alone, the city recorded 573 murders, the highest per capita murder rate of any US city at the time. As Blanco's empire grew, so did law enforcement efforts to bring her down. The newly formed DEA made Blanco a top priority. Operation Banshee involved extensive surveillance and wiretaps to dismantle Blanco's smuggling network. Undercover operations became increasingly dangerous as agents infiltrated Blanco's network. Several operatives lost their lives in the process, highlighting the extreme risks involved in pursuing such a ruthless target. The DEA expanded its international cooperation, working closely with Colombian authorities to track Blanco's movements. In Miami, the DEA faced unique challenges. The volume of cocaine and Blanco's violent tactics created a volatile environment. The breakthrough came in 1984, when intelligence suggested Blanco had moved to California. In February 1985, DEA agents finally arrested Griselda Blanco in Irvine, California. Blanco's capture was a significant victory for the DEA, marking the culmination of over a decade of intense pursuit. Charged with conspiracy and drug trafficking, Blanco was sentenced to more than a decade in prison. While incarcerated, she faced additional murder charges in Miami, further cementing her fall from power. Despite her incarceration, Blanco continued to exert influence over her criminal empire from behind bars. In 2004, after serving 19 years in federal prisons, Blanco was deported to Colombia. Back in Colombia, Blanco kept a low profile. On September 3rd, 2012, at the age of 69, Blanco met a violent end on the streets of Medellin. Ironically, she was killed by assassins on a motorcycle, a method she herself had pioneered during her reign in Miami. Blanco's notoriety has made her a subject of fascination in popular culture, inspiring numerous documentaries, books, and TV series. While Blanco is gone, her methods and legacy continue to influence drug traffickers today. Thanks for tuning in to our video. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. See you in the next video.